Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Ailey. If you're new, today's video, you can see I'm sort of like half done. It's a little bit strange. I actually wanted to deep dive into how to do these sort of like really intricate sort of cut out. I mean, I just literally pulled this out of my backside five minutes before filming <laughs> or five minutes before doing it. So it's not like as nice as I would like it to be. I'd probably change up the colours a little bit and stuff like that, but I honestly just wanted to show techniques. So I've done a little bit for like TikTok and stuff like that, but if you wanna see the nitty gritty and the techniques that go into making big bold looks like this, it'll help you like with skills for cut creases and things like that. It's not just for doing these sorts of designs. So if you want to learn the cut crease tricks, tips, best products to use, then just keep watching. I've left this eye clear. Obviously, yes, I do have slightly less hooded eyes than I used to. Um, they're not as, they're actually still hooded. They're just not as puffy. So like I don't have as much kind of excess skin up here. But as you can see, it's still hooded from outer to, uh, inner to outer corner because they're not 100% healed yet. So this will work on hooded eyes. It doesn't work on hooded eyes where the skin is like literally like you can pull it and it like pulls out to here, unfortunately. I know the struggle on putting makeup on eyes like that. It is just something, it is just one of those things. Hooded eyes, most definitely yes, this can work on. And if you wanna go up here, I will link some for you. <laughs> okay, so the first thing that I do, obviously I don't want this to be a million years long is I take the acid rain or something similar. So like uh, an acid rain or a paint pot or something like that. Just something with a slightly thicker consistency. Oh, that one definitely needs replacing. To do work as like your main base. You don't need to put this all over your eye, but honestly, just because it's easier, that's what I do. So I just get a wee flat brush and pat that all over my eye. Make sure that you're not using too much. I normally go in and get it most of the way covered and then just take my finger to smooth it out and that sort of like lifts the excess as well. It's literally just to give you a sticky base and to cancel out any discoloration. Okay, then the next thing you wanna do is just think of a color scheme. I've literally just used every color here, just because I couldn't be bothered trying to think of things that would go nice together. So I took the Banana Fetish palette because I knew I was going to need the yellow and I knew that it had a pink in it and I'm just going to take, this is a little brush from my Kitco. These are the smallest blending brushes I have ever found. I'll link them in the description box for you. But see, I'll show you, they are like, I've got a full video on these as well. They are fluffy, but they're very, very, very thin. So they come to a really small point. So if you're doing work like this, it doesn't go everywhere. You can see that it just goes exactly where you want it. I mean, it still blends out the edges, but it places it where you want it. So I'm just gonna sort of match what I've got going on here. The biggest thing I will say about doing any sort of look like this is they're never gonna match. Not 100%. Okay, so I've laid down my pink. And now I'm gonna go into my blue, which blue did I use? So I'm going into the Blue Blood palette and I'm taking a mixture of Blue Blood and I'm cold. And I'm just gonna figure out where that runs to. So it runs to the outside of my iris. It's there, so I'm gonna just, and you'll notice I'm being messy. I'm not doing this. I should probably play it in closer actually. Okay, so I'm just gonna fling that on. I want it to be sort of semi-blended at the top. and then sort of almost like a purpley shade in the middle because I've blended them together. You are always can go back, so I'm just going between the two shades just now. I have a towel in front of me, so I'm using it kind of like a color switch. But there you go, that's as simple as that part is. This is where it becomes a little bit more intricate and this is where my first trick is gonna be. So you don't want to use the same sort of thick base this time because that won't glide. So I go in with the P. Louise base, the original one. So I'm gonna try my best to sort of start it at the same place as the other one. And this is the trick. This brush, Jamie Genevieve, <laughs> you are a genius. So this is the Vive 229 Lip and Line. And it's 
it's going to be like the same colour as the palm of my hand, but it's got sort of like a, I'll put it over this, like a curved design on it. You can probably see it when I'm using it. So it just sort of glides effortlessly because the bristles aren't working against you and it gives you the most perfect line. That line could take you one stroke or it could take you a million, it doesn't matter. If you've got, if you've only got like a round brush like this, then what I do is I tend to just go in and like I'll press and drag, press and drag. And it doesn't give you like a really, really uh, crisp line to begin with, but what the, you can then do is you can then go in and tidy it up after you've got the line in place. But I tell you, if you want to do looks like this, get this brush. I already have three more in my basket online that I'm going to order because they're amazing. So that was easy. So I've probably got slightly a different shape on this side, but I don't care at this point. That to me would be the easy part. This next part is where we get a little bit more intricate because you've got a line now that you've got to preserve. So I've got a little brush from, it's the Morphe Jaclyn Hill collection, it's the GH42. I've got a couple of these because I really like them. I'm gonna go in with the lightest banana shade, so it's my peeps in Banana Fetish. Just in case, I mean, you don't really need to know what it is that I'm using if you're gonna be using your own colors anyway. And I sort of get it on like the tip of my brush and just wiggle that in underneath that line. When you're working with a darker shade and a lighter shade, it's always easier because that that there's nothing for it to stick to on top of that pink, so it's not going to fluff up onto it. Then I'll take Banana Fetish, which is the really yellowy shade in this palette, and I'm going to do exactly the same as I did with the pink and the blue. I'm just sort of going to blend it up. Don't worry about the bottom. Just get it as close as you can to that line that we've created on the, the pink we're not having a, a little cut out there it's just going to be butted up against it after we get just into where the blue starts that's where my green's going to cut in so all sort of like a slow process build it up slowly sometimes i'll do things better on one eye and i'm like oh i have to go back and like change the other eye but focus on one thing at a time this is where it's a wee bit more difficult because I'm actually evening it up. So I'm going to look down at my mirror. I have a mirror sort of like just right underneath where the camera is. And I'm looking down into it just now. So I'm going to again mark up where that is. And then... Now this is where my eyes aren't 100% symmetrical. So... I'm going to make sure and take this a little bit thinner. When you're doing it as well, always go a little bit thicker than you're thinking. See how thin this one is over here? This, this one's a little bit thick just now. I can always add a little bit more and thin it out. Whereas it's harder then to add it if you've taken it too thin on one side. And see how there's quite a build up of product. I'm just going to tap it, sort of pull it away down towards my eyelashes. Just to smooth it out because obviously when it dries, you don't want it to dry like thick and pasty. So this I was actually just going to leave clear, like this colour here. Um, so depending on your skin tone, you know, like it, it would be a different shade. Instead, I actually spotted this really beautiful iridescent green, so it looks like there's no colour there, but then you move your head and it sort of appears. This is in the Blood Money palette too. It's the shade Divine Intervention. I'm going to grab that, and I'm going to do exactly the same thing. So I actually might have used this brush. So this is the GH47 brush. It's like a little liner brush. Pick up Divine Intervention, and yeah. This actually packs it on a little bit better. Now, I don't actually have enough down here to add in a little bit in to give it something to stick to. Now this obviously will travel because it's a wee bit shimmery, so this is where I'm going to pick up this. So this is dirty, don't mind it, it is just a baby wipe or a face 
cleansing wipe. I take a pair of tweezers or something with a flat edge on it. I stick the tweezers through, it makes a little ghost. <laughs> I stick the tweezers through the wipe and then you've got an edge. And I close my eye and I just swipe it. An easier edge to work with. Another thing you can do is you can take a little bit of Vaseline, get a different type of brush, cut it with that and then wipe it away if, it, if it's like really sticky. The lid piece is the one piece that I'm not 100% on. It was just because that was the colours that I had left but in hindsight I'd probably go dark greens or something like that. Okay, so first of all, I actually took Orange Fatal and forged and put them in, but it was too much. So I am actually gonna mix Orange Fatal with Unpeeled Pleasure. And I'm gonna go in here, same thing again. I'm just literally painting in the shape, following that line. And I did this before I did these two bits because I wanted to know how much space I had left. So I've done that, I'm going to take the red which is forged, I'm going to blend that into that kind of corally orange shade. I always do this and then go back and blend everything and make sure it's all. So I've taken Deadly Intentions and on that other eye there, my scar sort of creates that perfect shape. So this side I'm going to have to wing it. <laughs> no pun intended. Eyes are not the same shape, so we want to come down. Sometimes you have to go back and forth quite a lot. And then with this black, it's got like a shimmer in it. It doesn't really translate unless you do it with your finger like that. So that's what I've done. I don't know if it's gonna come across on camera, but it looks really pretty. So I'm taking Blue Monday, and what I did was is I just followed this is the kind of shape I had left. I had no idea what I was doing when I did this part. I just sort of like really didn't think about it too much. Look at the black over my face. And I'm taking Controversy from the Mini Controversy palette and I just used that to fill in the last little gap that I had. Okay, so the trick is then everything's down, everything looks nice. Uh, but it's not like really in your face as you can see everything's a wee bit more polished on this side so what I do now is I take a deeper shade so for um, the blue I'm taking Undertaker out of the Blue Blood palette and I'm just going to take it along the edge almost like shading and blend it in I'm just taking it along the line along the very bottom line very, very lightly. And then just blend it in. See how it just gives a sort of tiny, tiny wee gradient. Okay, for the yellow and the green, for the yellow I took sort of like one of the darker browns. This is very, very careful. Just want to take a deeper shade. I took Crocodile Tears. Barely touching it, taking off the excess and then going back in and blending. And I'm going to go into these ones and sort of just get them to full pigment. I added in my eyebrow, which I'll do just now. Okay. For a look like this as well, like this is obviously like a kind of a little bit of a tip. Um, you can or you cannot add eyeliner. You can't really see the outer corner eyeliner because it's sort of faked anyway. So I just add it to the inner corner. It gives you the little sort of cat eye effect. You don't necessarily want to add huge big lashes either because you don't want to cover up all the work that you've done. And there we have it. So I'm going to finish up the rest of my face and then I'm going to come back and I'm going to kind of wrap up all the little tips and tricks on what I found made these types of looks look better and easier to do. So I will be right back. Now that everything is done, I actually really like how the looks turned out. Um, 
but there is a little bit of touching up to do. So the only thing I can see is I can see more of this shimmery green over here than I can over here. So I'm just gonna take that and add a little bit more. This is obviously the finished look. So this is this side and that's the first side. You can see they're not identical. They're never gonna be identical. I mean, I don't, I don't know of anybody that can get them absolutely identical, but I do know people that edit their photos. So <laughs> when obviously you go into, you do your, your photo for Instagram or whatever, you can go in and you can literally change the lines. You can deepen the colors, you can make other colors pop, you can put in highlights, you can do loads. If that is your vibe, you do you. Some things don't pick up well in photos, so me looking at it in real life, maybe it's not coming across like that in film, and sometimes that's frustrating. So if you wanna edit your photos, edit them. I choose not to a lot of the time, but if something really looks dull when it really shouldn't, then I'll maybe add a little highlight into it, or even just like take the sharpening tool. I tend to find that with these types of looks, see if you just take the sharpening tool and run it over where the, the, the stuff is, immediately makes it look more vibrant, if you know what I mean. So, a really, really quick recap because we, we've been through it all. I'm going to stick a list up on the screen. So you need a good base for your base base, although if you don't want two bases, you can just use concealer or the same base. You need a fluidy base to cut. You need your brushes, you know, all different sizes, some for cutting and some for applying the eyeshadows. Then you need patience. That's going to be one of these things. You need patience, you need to sit and you need to just slow down. Uh, you need an idea, like with everything, an idea of what you're going to do, but honestly you can just wing it if you want. And that's pretty much it. You don't really need anything else. You need the tools, you need the products. The products don't have to be the P. Louise ones, but I will link them below. I really hope that these tips and tricks helped, but if you found any value in it, then obviously share it with your friends if you think that somebody else should watch it. And give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. If you want to see more in-depth videos like this, let me know and hopefully I will see you guys in my next video. Bye!